Hey, how's it going everyone and welcome to my Resident Evil Remastered Real Survivor walkthrough. So I wanted to make this video for anybody who's looking to get the Real Survivor achievement but doesn't want to do anything too technical. This run does include saves and stuff like that. It's pretty much a safe run for anyone who's just trying to get Real Survivor mode done. You might also be able to get the under 3 hours achievement done with this run if you're quick enough. For anybody who's interested, I'm playing this on PC with tank controls, if that means anything to any of you. Hopefully it helps some of you out. Let me know in the comment section if it did help you in some way, maybe get a couple of your achievements. But uh, yeah, much love for checking out the video, I really do appreciate that. Let's get this going. Resident Evil. Right, so we got cutscenes here that we're going to skip. We're going to skip through all the cutscenes in this just so we can get through it as fast <laughs> as possible. Um, and if you haven't seen this mod before, I'm using a Master Chief mod just for the fun of it. Replaces the BSA, BSAA Chris model with Master Chief. I think it's from Halo 1. But anyway, at the start here, we're heading through those double doors, heading through the dining room, and then through this door at the back to go and activate the first encounter with the zombie and then we're just going to turn around and go back through the door that we came in through and head back to the main hall so right now we just want to go and grab this handgun back through this dining hall through this door get to the main hall grab this handgun we won't be taking out too many zombies uh in this first part of the mansion there's a couple of tricky ones that you can dodge, but I feel like it's easy to just take out certain zombies. Right now we're heading back the way we just went a lot of back and forth in this run. Um, questing to get keys and stuff. Just so you can unlock certain doors and get into new areas. Find your way around. But we don't have to worry about that zombie. He's shuffled up this corridor. And we're not going that way just yet, so he's not a problem right now. Right, let's go. Like I said, this run is really for anyone who's just trying to get through real survivor mode without worrying too much about getting too technical and uh, maybe you're happy to save it. I'd say if you're going for the no save run, it's probably better to do that on very easy or easy just because there's less zombies and more health everywhere. So there's a herb there, grab that herb and then we're going to go up these stairs and through this door and we're coming to a pretty dangerous corridor right now. This hallway is kind of annoying. There's a zombie right around this corner and you want to stay close to the right hand side and sort of scrape along that door. And he shouldn't be able to get the grab on you. Come down this corridor, grab the golden arrow. And there's a zombie here that we need to take out. One of the only ones we take out in the whole section of the first section of the mansion. Try to get around him if you can. I'm pretty sure he got a grab on me here, but... However you can, just get past him for now, and then we can go out of this area and come back in to deal with him, because that other zombie is shuffling up as well, and you really only need to deal with this zombie. You can kill the other one if you want to, but he's pretty easy to get the dodge on most of the time. So go back into this area, and that'll reset the zombies, and that's just a good, it's a good little trick to use if you get stuck in an area, or if you're cornered, you can just go back through the door, and it'll reset the room for you. You haven't got auto-aim on this mode, so you kind of need to make sure you're pinpointing your shot properly. Uh, with this zombie that we're trying to take out, it's pretty easy because he's just straight down that corridor and it's easy enough to see which way you're shooting. I don't think he's dead yet though, so I need to shoot him a few more times. Again, I need to turn that around. Listen out for the crunchy noise of your bullets hitting the zombies. And uh, just kind of waiting for him to come to me here. Pretty sure he's still alive. You can tell when they actually die because when they go down, uh, a puddle of blood will like spill out of them. You can see uh, quite easily on the floor there. Just check for that before you leave. When you, you do have to come back to this area a little later, and he does become a crimson head, but he doesn't stand up. You don't have to worry about actually fighting him as a crimson head. So it is fine to kill that one zombie and leave him there. Don't actually burn up any zombies in this run at all. Just because we're nice and quick about it in most of most of the areas, and we leave a lot of the normal zombies alive. Right, so back to the main hall through those double doors. Now we're going to go down these stairs and through this door that's at the top of the stairs. Just to go and use the golden arrow 
to get this first mansion key. So we want to come down these stairs and there's a zombie directly in front of us. And another really easy trick to avoid the zombies is just to use the stairs. You can more than likely just run around this zombie if you want to. But if you get him on the stairs, they can't grab you. So try to lure him onto the stairs and then run past him. And if you saw the zombie on the left there in that last camera angle, you want to try your best to stick to the right hand of that gate or that gated area in that scene just so that he doesn't even move. If you head down the left side or down the middle, he'll tend to start moving and he'll be on you in your way when you're on the way out of this area. So examine the arrow, get the arrowhead, put it into this statue and then head down the stairs. Like I said, try your best to stay to the right side of that pathway as you uh, approach the area where you've got to use the arrowhead. So we're going to grab this book and we need to examine the book check the back of it to get this key and then once we've done that the book will open as well but we just want to exit out of that we're not interested about that document we're in it at all let's go back out the way we came straight up these stairs and this area is kind of tricky just because you've got this zombie that's lurking around here somewhere and what you want to try and do wait around on the stairs you can try and brave it out and just run past him if you like but if you want to keep yourself safe try to wait until he gets to the top of the stairs that you are standing on and he won't come down those stairs he'll just turn around when he reaches them as soon as he goes to turn around try and run past him you might still get grabbed but uh, that's the easiest safe way to deal with that zombie like i said you can just try and squeeze past him if you can but uh, that's much more tricky to do right so straight down the stairs as we go back through the door we came in through and then we'll go in into what a lot of people call the dog hallway this is the hallway where the dogs jump through the windows but we're gonna do this run in a way that that doesn't happen they'll only jump through the window if you head back through this corridor and if you only go through this way uh just once which is uh the total amount of times we have to go through there during this run you won't have to deal with these dogs at all push this cabinet out of the way and you can get another defense dagger always useful to have these defense items and if you find a particular zombie difficult you can always de-equip those defense items and save them for a little later um that is up to you though feel free to leave them on if you want you really only need to be concerned about the grenades and we haven't got any of the grenades just yet there's only one we can get so we're going to come through this door and head into this door which is just ahead and on our right it's kind of weird to describe directions in this game just because the camera angles kind of make it hard to reference. We need to pull the plug on this bath and skip the cutscene. As soon as, you, as soon as you skip that cutscene, you're going to run towards the bath, pick up the old key, quick turn and run back out the door and you shouldn't have to deal with that zombie at all. And then we're going back towards this door. Use the old key we just got to open it. One of the main differences between Chris's and Jill's run is that uh, you have to use... The lockpick to open those doors is Jill, but as Chris, you need to find the old keys, which takes a little bit longer. I haven't really done Chris's runs before, so I had to learn where to get the old keys from. So right here, I thought I'd grab a red herb and just combine it with the green herb we already have from earlier to make a mixed herb, which gets you up to full health if you need it. There's also extra green herbs here, uh, so I decided to grab one of those and just heal myself to get myself back up to fine condition. And we can grab the chemical to be used on plants right there it's a really easy way to heal yourself in that area because we don't come back here at all just make sure you pick up the herbs before the chemical because you might not have enough slots to carry everything sort yourself out before you pick up that item and we're carrying on as we come out through this hallway that guy will burst through out of the bathtub room and we're just going to run past him and head to these double doors that are at the very end of this corridor and then we want to go in through this door through this corridor we've got another zombie it's kind of in the way of the room we need to get to. Um, so be aware that you've got to come around this corner and just run for the door and stick to the far right side as much as you can. And he shouldn't get the grab on you. You do need to be quick as you come through that door. Remember, you can always reset if you go back through the door and through again. But that door is uh, only usable once, so try not to do it there if you can. Put away the survival knife, the mixed herb we just got, and any extra handgun ammo. Uh, that we have and we're going to grab the old key that's on the typewriter right there or on the table that the typewriter is on and then back out the door we just came from we're going to stick 
to the right side again. Avoid this zombie. Head up the stairs. There's another zombie just on the corner here. If you wait on the corner, just here, he should go for the lunge and completely miss. Uh, unless he's in a particularly weird spot. Most of the time, that'll work out very easy if you just wait on the corner. Wait for him to lunge and then run past him. And you've got another zombie here. And as soon as you go through that door, you need to run... Uh, to head to this door that's just past him. If you just stick to the left-hand side, he shouldn't get the grab on you. If you're too slow, don't hesitate to go back through the door and reset that just so that you can time it well for yourself. And we're going to grab the dog whistle that's in this room and just head back out. We're going to do the opposite as to what we just did and just stick to our left. But head in the other way. There's another zombie here who can be in different places, so try to trigger this camera angle and see where he is. You can see I turned around. So I was trying to get ready to run away from him. He can be in random places though, so you can just get unlucky there and end up getting grabbed. But uh, it's a good idea to try and trigger that camera angle so you can see exactly where he is. Sometimes you just can't avoid him though. He's one of those zombies that can just get in the way sometimes. But we're going to get past him, head into the main hallway, and then we're going to go downstairs to grab the ink ribbons that are in the dining room so that we can drop a save in the next... Uh, ink ribbon typewriter room whatever you want to call it the safe rooms and uh, yeah in this mode the main differences are the item boxes aren't linked so if you put ink ribbons or whatever in one item box you might find when you go to another one that is well you will find if you go to another one that is not there so item management is super important during this run and now we're going to head back up top to go and deal with the dogs the reason I've done uh the item pick up there instead of earlier on is because we've had situations where our, our inventory is full we've just freed up a couple of spaces and we can keep it open for uh, the ink ribbons until we get to somewhere where we can stash them so kind of makes it so we don't have to go back on ourselves but we're heading through this door using the mansion key and we're going to open this door with the old key and this is where we fight the two dogs they have a uh, dog collar so we can get the coin and there's free herbs right there if you need to heal yourself. That's kind of a convenient spot. If you get into trouble a little later too, you can just come back here and heal yourself for free up to three times. Equip the handgun, blow the dog whistle, and then when you hit a chain, you can start shooting at the dogs. So you just kind of want to aim straight down that pathway that I was aiming down. It's kind of hard without the auto aim. Um, if you equip the daggers here, I think I turned them off. If one of the dogs jumps on you, you can always use the dagger to take it out. But yeah, that attack right there will just insta-kill the dog if you have the daggers equipped. But I was saving them for a little later. It's up to you though, you can get away with using one one of them without being in too much trouble later. But uh, really, I feel like you don't have to worry too much about taking damage by the dogs here just because you've got the herbs right next to them. I mean, I think I got pretty hurt by them. Uh, but I just wanted to go and heal myself. Before we continued, that's one use on those herbs. Back up to full health. Very nice. We'll grab the collar now. And uh, if we examine the collar, you can get the coin out of it. But I think I waited. Oh no, I did it right here. There we go. Press that switch, get the coin, and then we need to flip the coin around. 180 degrees. And we'll get the imitation key. So, back out of the menus and discard the dog whistle. Don't need that anymore. Now's a good opportunity to go and save it if you want to, because the next bit that's coming up is timed and uh, you need to successfully do this next part in order to make this run a lot easier on yourself. So we're going to try and get the dodge on that zombie. It's a very tricky zombie to dodge on now. Just try and approach him and, and then back up. Hopefully he'll lunge and uh, allow you to go past him. But there's a couple of places that we'll go into that have heals. We do have a spot after this where we get free heals as well. You've got a mixed hub hopefully in one of the item boxes. And there's a first aid spray in the item box that's in this room as well. So we're going to save just in case we mess up on this next bit I'm just going over the same save and head to the item box and we're going to put the ink ribbons away and like I said you got the first aid spray there if you do really need it 
we can head out of this door. Did I, what did I do here? I put the handgun away for the moment. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else we have to shoot. I was trying to think if we needed to put away either of those keys, but we don't. We actually need those keys. Or well, the golden key is the only one that can unlock doors. We actually need, still need that one. So, let's head back up the stairs past this zombie. I actually took the close way there, but it's probably safer to take it wide. And then uh, we need to go this way now that we've got the imitation key to go back into the hallway with the crimson head in. There's also a herb in this hallway you can grab before you go through the door. So we're heading to our left around this corner. And when you run past this crimson head, he stands up. If you want to grab that herb that's next to him, he won't stand up next to you. He'll only stand up when you approach that door that we just went through. So you are safe to grab that herb if you need to. I'm going to come up here, up these stairs, and uh, take this key. If you want to run up, if you're wondering how I run up the stairs a little bit faster, you just mash the run button, and you go up a hell of a lot faster than you do just holding run. Okay, so we're going to put the invitation key in after taking the real key, and spin it around head back the way we came. Now we have to run through this corridor again. This area is definitely a nightmare, which is why we took out one of those zombies a bit earlier. We need to U-turn around this corner and try your very best to dodge those guys. I know it's difficult. You might take a grab or a slash there, um, but you can see why I took out that other zombie, just because when we run back through there, the Crimson Head's chasing you, and if you're getting grabbed by two zombies, uh, it can make things really, really difficult. Just taking out that one zombie makes your life so much easier when running through there. And there's another time that we have to run through there later as well. Um, and that guy has turned into a Crimson Head by that point, but uh, he doesn't stand up, so we don't have to worry about him. Anyway, back to the main hall, directly opposite where you come through into the main hall. Go through this door, and we're going to go over to this door, open it with a mansion key. And now we're going to have a timed uh, side kind of mission, I guess, to save Richard. We need to go and get the serum from the save room that we were just in. And I know it uh, doesn't really make sense to... Well, you might think it doesn't make sense to go there and save it before we did this, but we haven't really got the time to drop saves whilst doing this because Richard dies within like three minutes. So we need to do this pretty fast because there's a couple of other things we're going to do whilst we're on route doing that to uh, make all of this nice and easy. Because a lot of the areas within this run, if you head into them multiple times, more zombies appear. And you want to make it so that you will, you spend as little time as possible in certain areas. You'll see what I mean as we continue. So back to where we just were a second ago. Follow this all the way around. we got to try and dodge this guy again. Like I said, just approach him. When you get close, just try and mash back and he should go for the lunge. If he doesn't, just take the grab and get past him as fast as you can. And then we got another zombie here to get around. Wait for him to come near you on the stairs and then you can just sort of circle around right there. And then we're going to head into this room and grab the serum, which is next to the item box on the shelf in the corner right here. I think I accidentally went into the item box there. Yeah, right there. Grab that, and then we're just going to leave. Don't worry about doing anything else in that room for now. And now we head, uh, head further down this corridor around the corner here. And there's another zombie hanging around just here. And if you take that corridor wide... You can quite easily avoid him, but uh, he managed to get the grab on me there as I was trying to get there. I think I was a little too slow on the approach because though the, that zombie's in a different place to the hard mode and normal mode, so I wasn't sure where he was going to be. Either way, coming through this door, heading all the way down the corridor, and this is one of those areas we only want to visit once just because on the way back out, zombies burst through the windows, so we don't want to come back here. This is the only time we'll be coming to this place. And we're going to head around to the pump here, drop the chemical to be used on plants in. And then if you just keep mashing exit, uh, sorry, action, <laughs> exit, just keep mashing action and you should get through this. You need to uh, press yes and then turn it to the red side, which are the first options available. So just keep mashing action there. And 
That'll kill the plant. If you turn it to the wrong side, you'll end up killing the herbs that are on the side here, which you can use if you hurt at this point, but bear in mind that you need to be quick. You can't really take your time doing this. Pretty sure it's like three, maybe four minutes before Richard dies, and you need to get it done before that, because if he survives, we get the assault shotgun, and we need that assault shotgun to make later parts of the game a lot easier. So, kill the plant, grab the mask, leave the room, head back out this way, is where the zombies jump through, which is why we're not going to come back here. And we need to go, <coughs> excuse me, we need to go into this room that's on our right side. And there's two zombies again that are very tricky in here. One of them is in this wardrobe. When he comes out, you want to move back and to your right. I ended up turning around here, which was kind of stupid. And hopefully he'll lunge for you giving you the opportunity to run around him to get into this closet to get the old key to get past and then on the way out just hug the room wide and you should avoid that other zombie that's another really tricky room we're gonna stick to the left hand side to avoid getting grabbed by that zombie on the way out as well i know that one room with the closet zombie is very tough uh but hopefully you get through it without getting grabbed. You do have time if you get grabbed still to get through this. It's just inconvenient. And then we're going to head back here to the dining room. And straight back to the main hall. And up the stairs. Back towards Richard and Rebecca. Hopefully you've done this in time. If not, you might have to load that save we just made and do that again. Maybe practice it a little bit. You do need to do this successfully to get the assault shotgun. Mm -mm. Not only is it a really powerful gun, but you also get 10 shots in it when you get it straight away. Which is really, really valuable. High value shotgun. And if you've done that right, you should get a cutscene. Uh, instead of just having Richard dead in the hallway. And you will be teleported back to the room where we grabbed the serum and saved it a little bit earlier. It's a good opportunity to save it again. Also head back into the room and Rebecca's in there who can heal you. I think at this point my health was good, but using this character this model makes it so Master Chief slaps Rebecca yeah, in the you? face. It's a quick tsh -tsh for her there. So I have to do it every time. <laughs> Once that's done, you have control in the room Thanks. again. So if you want to save it or put anything away, I actually think we need to put away the... Uh, one mansion key right now or you can put the gold mansion key away I'm not sure if I did but I dropped another save right here just because we got that done I kind of wanted to even though I could probably do this using a lot less saves I kind of wanted to just produce something that you guys could follow along with without getting too stuck or frustrated if you do die because it's very easy to die in this game if you take uh, unfortunate zombie grabs so let's put this key away. I did end up putting it away. Put the ink ribbon away as well. We need to make sure you do that because if you don't, you won't have the room in your inventory. Um, I also took this first aid spray with me just in case I got into trouble somewhere along the way. Hopefully you've got at least one health item lurking around in that item box or in your inventory somewhere. Now we're going to head down this hallway and try and get around this guy again. I actually got the dodge on him that time when... Time wasn't of the essence. When I needed to be fast, he freaking got the grab on me when I didn't. He did. It's annoying. <laughs> but either way, we're heading into this room now to get the only flash grenade we can get in the first section of the mag uh, mansion. And you want to make sure that after getting that grenade that you don't have it equipped because you need to save it for the, the uh, Elder Crimson Head that we're going to fight when we get all of the masks. So... Just go into your inventory, into the defense items, and unequip whatever's equipped. Just save that grenade. It's very, very important that you save it. So, now we're going to head back the way we came. I have again got the dodge on him when it doesn't matter. It's it's kind of annoying to watch, to be honest with you, but never mind. So, now that we've done that, we need to get past this zombie who is standing in front of the door. We need to go through. And there's also this guy that gets onto the screen first who's lurking around um, the top of the stairs. Just head down to the stairs and wait for them to come over. You can easily get past them when they're just doing this vomit attack. They can't do their grab attack on the stairs. So it makes life a lot easier. So now they're both out of the way, we're going to head this way back to the uh, main hall. So that we can go and get the first part of the sheet music. 
And now that you've uh, done the Richard scenario on real survivor mode, that zombie that is usually on the other side of this hallway is now in front of you, so you will have to take the long way around past the statue with the blue gem in it just to avoid him. Bear that in mind, because you might have it sort of in your head that you just have to run the same way you have before and accidentally run into that zombie. I know I've done that a couple of times. Kind of annoying. We're heading through the same door that we've been through about five times by now and back through into the room where Richard and Rebecca were. And now that we've saved Richard, there's a zombie just around that corner, so you want to take the left, the early left turn there. You've also got two free green herbs if you're not feeling so healthy. Easy health. And there's a zombie waiting in this hallway. You just kind of want to stand here for a sec to lure him out and again use the cheeky stair trick to get around him. Just wait for him to be on the stairs. I think I got vomited on here and that's kind of stupid because it's easy, really easy to get around him, but you don't actually take that much damage if you get thrown up on. If you're doing this on any other difficulty as well, there should be a grenade in the corner of that hallway, but there's not one there on real survival. So here we are in another tricky little room. This one is definitely a tough one. We want to head into this room after pushing the bookshelf out of the way and then just turn around and run back out of it to lure this zombie out. And what I was trying to do here is lure this zombie over to one side of the table and then light the candle so I could hopefully get both of these zombies in the same place and run past them but I'm pretty sure I ended up getting grabbed by one of them but it doesn't really matter because you've got those two green herbs just outside of this room you can use to heal yourself either way when you've lit the candle go into the room that zombie was in and grab the musical score from the shelf and then just do what you can to try and get past these guys it's definitely a mess here for me I haven't got the guns with me or anything, and I'm not using my defense items because you really need to save that grenade. You want to make sure that before you come into this room, you've 100% not got that grenade equipped, because if you use it there after taking an unfortunate grab like I did, you're going to have to load your save, just because uh, the Crimson Head fight is really difficult without that grenade. So, after just about getting through there, come back out the way you came in and if you're hurt like I am you can always use these two herbs on the floor to heal yourself I know I've got that first aid spray but I tr really tried to save those because they can take you just from danger to fine in one use really really useful items so back up to fine condition after using those herbs we're going to head out of here now and we need to go and get the other half of the musical score and there's another really awkward zombie dodge coming up uh, that I always struggle with. This is why I brought the first aid spray with me. Just because of this one guy. If you're doing this on other difficulties, you might have more grenades. And you might be able to get away with using a grenade on him to get past him. But you actually have to run past him twice. So we're going to go down the stairs, back into the bottom floor of the main hall. And through the door to the dining room. And I think this is the original zombie. This is the, the first zombie you encounter that we've got to get past a couple of times here. Definitely, I'm, I think he grabbed me both times we've got to get past him. He really is quite awkward, but the way to get past him is just to approach him. And then when he gets close, just mash back on whatever it is you're using to control for me. It's S because I'm playing this on PC, but he just wouldn't trigger the lunge for me. And my back tapping skills were not good enough so he got the grab on me but anyway we're going to use the mansion key on this door now to go into the piano room and head around here push this shelf out of the way and you can grab yourself another free heal I mean, uh, the other half of the musical score, that's not a free heal. We're going to combine these two together and uh, use them on the piano. I'm thinking ahead, thinking ahead about if I go and use some free heals or not. And we need to let Rebe Rebecca practice heal and then leave the room. And we need to quickly run past this zombie again. But he's easy from this direction. You can just sort of stick to either side and he shouldn't get the grab on you. I'm pretty sure I usually take the right side. He tries to turn around and lunge, but you should be good just to run straight past him. As long as you don't try to run at him head on. So, now we're going to grab the emblem from above the fireplace. The crusty emblem. And head back out. 
once we've done that, we literally just want to turn around and go back through these doors. That will give Rebecca enough time to practice enough for us to continue along. So we've got to get past the OG zombie one more time. The OG triple OG zombie. Definitely not the easiest of zombies to get past. If you've never played this game, you might think, well, why don't you just kill the zombies? And if you didn't know, if you kill these normal zombies, they don't die and disappear like most enemies do in video games. Uh, they stay on the floor, and after I think... I'm not sure how long it is, it's a certain amount of time. They turn into stronger Chris, enemies that are much Chris. more difficult to kill. And we will be fighting one of those in a little while. So, we're going to come back into this room. And then we can use the crusty emblem after taking the golden one out of this slot. The Rebecca has opened the entrance too, just by playing the piano, learning that song. So now we have a gold emblem, and we've used our crusty emblem. And we're going to head back out. We have to run past the OG zombie one more time. Again, we can just stick to the right side. So at this point, I went left that time. I was mixing it up. Feeling the variety. So, uh, I think I might have gone back to the dog hallway to get some herbs that grow in there. Just because we're hurt and I don't really like to use heals if I don't have to. Also, I, th it's, I think it's a good idea to do that. Just because if anyone's struggling to find health, if I'm struggling myself and I go and grab heals, at least you guys know where to get them from, you know? So, we're going to slap the gold emblem above the fireplace. The clock will pop open. And the solution to this puzzle is the painting on the left. Well, really, it's just easy enough to know that you've got to turn the large gear to the left twice. And then, when it asks you to turn again, just say no, and you've solved the puzzle. Again, large gear to the left twice. Nice and simple. And we're going to get the key. So now we have to go and deal with Yawn. But I'm pretty sure I went back to the dog hallway to get a free herb usage. Just because my health's on danger here. But I could have used the first aid spray. I, th I just feel like it's a good idea for me to save him. And this is kind of what I wanted to achieve with uh, this run. It's just something people could follow if, you know, they don't know the speedrun. Because I feel like a lot of the tutorials and speedruns that I watch, they're from, like, super knowledgeable players who know how to, like, perfectly get around all the zombies and they barely use any heals because they know the game so well. Whereas that's not the case for everybody, you know what I mean? But either way, we have to take the long way around that hallway now because there's zombies there. And we're going to head back to where we fought the dogs a little earlier, back through this door. There are two uses left on these herbs. I'm pretty sure I didn't use the last one, but it's there if you need it. Right, heal up, head back, and now we're going to go and deal with our first encounter with the one. Which is, again, where we saved Richard earlier, but we don't really need to get ourselves into any danger getting there. It's perfectly safe. Just after that, we've got a slightly dangerous place. We're getting close now to where we've got all the masks, and we can go and deal with the Crimson Head. Let's head back this way, and directly opposite when we come through this door. Let's keep going. We need to head through this door, and we shouldn't have anyone bothering us in this hallway. For now at least, because we're just going to head through this first door again. And this key that we just got only has one use, and that's for the door we're about to unlock, so it gets thrown out of your inventory pretty damn quick. Around that dumb zombie. Probably the easiest zombie to dodge in the game, to be honest. And then through this door again, and we're heading to the doorway that's straight ahead of us. Which we can now unlock. Discard this key, and... 
some people worry about doing this part and getting poisoned and whatnot, but it's actually really easy to avoid him. I turn the music down because it's really, really loud in certain areas like this one. I wanted you guys to be able to hear me, but as soon as you gain control, just quick turn and run in this direction. Grab the mask that's right here. And when you're in this area, Yawn can't bite you or lift his head to bite you. So you can just run straight into him and then head back towards the door. Again, just quick turn as soon as you gain control. Run to the mask and then run back the way you came. And you should be golden every time. If you linger around for too long, he's going to raise his head and bite you. So just make sure you hit that quick turn as soon as the cutscene ends and you're good to go. Grab that mask head out of here and now we're going to go and get another mask there's a zombie in this hallway that likes to be in random positions um yeah he's right there for us this time i just took the hallway wide and got around him but he can be in really awkward places when you enter that hallway so be very careful and aware that he's there he can always just get a cheeky grab on you just do your best to avoid him is really the only advice i can give you just because he's in random places so then we're going to come into this room and we've got to get the jewelry box which is behind the little gated uh, area ahead of us. And the solution for this is top right, bottom left, bottom right, and then the last one should push itself in. And then once that's done, press the switch. Bam. And that will get you access to another one of the masks. Mysterious box. Then we're gonna open that up. I will press the switch. Will you press the switch? Yes. There's a mask inside. Good times. So, I think at this point I need to go and get an old key. And my inventory is full, but we're actually right next to an item box. And I, th I think... Well, first of all, we've got to run around here and into this door, and you've got to be quick about that, because that zombie that was right next to me just there is constantly moving, so you need to run through there quickly to avoid getting bitten by him. We're going to run around this guy, stick to the right-hand side of him, and you shouldn't get grabbed. And we need to go into this door to get another old key. But, uh, like I said, my inventory was full, so I think I had to quickly run to the item box in a second, but we need to go in here. Like I said earlier, when you run into areas multiple times, zombies will appear out of nowhere sometimes, or they'll break through windows or doorways, and then you'll have more zombies to deal with in certain places. And this is one of those areas, but we're actually quite lucky here in the sense that this zombie, I think you might see him now? No, we might see him on the way back. He's in that room with the deer head, but he's pretty much just standing there, and he's really easy to avoid, so... Don't worry about it too much. So now I need to head to the item box and put an item away. I could have just used the first aid spray and grabbed the old key, but I was trying to be uh, efficient with the uses and save them if I needed to for later and stuff, you know. So I quickly headed back to the item box here and stashed away. I'm not sure why I stashed away. Might have been the spray, but let's see. Yeah, I put the spray away. I think I might have grabbed the other spray as well. Even though, to be honest, it doesn't really matter because uh, the only place I can grab that spray is in this room if I leave it in the item box anyway. They're not linked, so... But either way, there's two in there now. Ease of access, I guess. And now... We've got to go back up to get that old key quickly. Shouldn't really be in any danger doing this. That's why I wasn't really bothered about going back down to the item box. So let's head back up. Now we've got space. And uh, at least if you guys have the same problem, you can quickly nip into that item box and put stuff away. You will be coming back there a little later. There's that zombie just randomly appears in this room. But this is why uh, this run's quite optimized to make sure we're not running through the same place more than a couple of times unless we really need to. Or if the layout doesn't change because there's certain areas where more zombies tend not to pop into. In certain areas where they do, but this guy's one of the good guys. He stands in the corner and minds his own bloody business and lets us do our thing. Either way, he's just running back now. He's, I think, yeah, he's about to burst through that door and come into this hallway, but that doesn't matter because the next time we come here, um, all of these zombies will be gone and there'll be hunters in this hallway, which I don't know if that's a better scenario, but it's 
at least negate the zombies, you know what I mean? So we're gonna head through here, and we need to go through this door. And another zombie's just crept into that room as well. Uh, he's not going to be a bother to us anyway. We're going to go into this room, which I like to call the Crow Room. We need to press the yellow switch from this side to turn this uh, picture orange. And then we're going to head around to the other side and press the other two pictures from this side to turn this one green. And this one, I think, purple. Yeah, purple. Press the switch over here. And... That should lift up this wall. Make sure you get that right, because if you don't, the crows are going to attack you. And then we need to use the key, the old key, on this gate. And that'll discard it out of your inventory, making enough space for the mask that's on the floor. Bam, that's all four masks. We can now go and fight the Elder Crimson Head. And because we've got that grenade, this fight is really, really easy. I feel like the hardest fight you'll ever have against this guy is if you're doing the CQC FTW run which is basically the close quarters combat for the win run you can't use defense items and you can't uh, use any guns just the knife fighting this guy with the, just the knife is absolutely horrible probably the hardest fight in the game if you ask me and we need to use these masks so this one on the far left is the eyes mask and you can actually see on the PC version which ones go where. I think this is the no features mask. And the next one is the nose, and the far right one is the mouth. On the Xbox version, I feel like I really struggled to see which one was which. Alright, and then the nose one. I ended up examining that, which I didn't want to do, but never mind. Slap that on there. And the mouth one. There we go. So, before you approach the coffin, make sure you've got the grenade equipped. I know I've already got it equipped, but you might just want to make sure. As long as you've got that grenade equipped, you want this guy to grab you. So just try to face him. Because obviously if he grabs you in the back, you won't use the grenade. He might get a slash off on you first. I think it took me a second or so before he actually got the grab on me. And then he grabbed me in the back there, which would have been annoying. There's another slash. God damn it, leave me alone. Go for the grab. Ugh. Just didn't want to get slashed. Grab me. Ugh. There we go. Grenade in the mouth, bud. And just run away to the corner of the room. Because if you're close to him and it blows up, it will hurt you. Got a handgun magazine there, but I'm not going to take that. We don't want that. And there we go. He's done for. And when he's dead, you can grab the uh, stone and metal object out of the coffin and press the switch to release the lock on the door. And once you've got that, we can head back out. We're done here. Nice and easy. And now... We're going to head back through the crow room. And we've got another awkward zombie dodge. It's actually quite an easy one, but he is just in the way. It's really difficult to run around him, so you really need to go for the dodge or take the grab. We've still got a first aid med on us, and there's still that free heal that is up by the dog area as well, if you really need it. So, once you come through this door, you want to try and run two steps forward to about there and then start backing up and he should go for the lunge allowing you to get past him like if you run about as far as i did and then just stop and start walking backwards he should go for that grab giving you the uh, opening to run past him to get to this gate when you come through here you want to be pretty quick as well use the stone and metal object on the wall right here and that'll unlock the door to your right which you want to run through as quick as possible because a dog gets released into this area and uh, you need to avoid that guy. You don't want to get grabbed by him. So in here we've got some shotgun shells, which are always useful. There's actually some more shotgun shells that we didn't grab a little bit earlier. We don't necessarily need them just yet. You can grab them later. Flash grenade. And they're in the area where we used the... Um, where we used the golden arrowhead... If you want to grab them there where that zombie was standing that didn't move us earlier on in the run. 
You can always grab those before you come through here for some extra shots, although you shouldn't really need them. Although it doesn't hurt, I grab them a little bit later rather than now. So, there's a switch here, press it. We've got to stop it on west. And the next one, next one we've got to stop on north. So, head down the path a little bit longer. There's a cutscene here, skip that. Not interested in those for now, just trying to get this done. And this one's got to be stopped on north, so just stop it at the right time. Once that's done, the uh, gate up ahead will open. Let's go. Good times, good times. Now we're just going to run straight through. So what, if you find the... I think you need a couple of medallions. You can get the magnum from that area. We're not going to be bothering with that in this run. Because uh, we get the shotgun, the assault shotgun, and the normal shotgun in this run. We don't need that magnum, although it is stupid powerful. It just takes a lot of extra time to get. It's not really worth... Not really worth your time. So follow this path all the way along. You're safe on this run through. Try and take note of the layout of those last few areas though just because on the way back there's a zombie there although it's pretty easy to avoid I will be warning you about that obviously so we're going to head to the cabin to have our first encounter with Lisa we're going to go through here into the fireplace room up these little stairs around the corner and past the item box drop off this ledge and grab the crank which is sitting in this corner right here flip around and hop back up here past the item box to the left again and you will hear Lisa enter the cabin and she's going to knock you the F out never a good time it's kind of weird that she knocks you out and leaves you down by the fireplace you know what I'm saying <clears throat> she's obviously waifu material Okay, so... Oh, look at that face. <laughs> you want to try and approach her and get her to swing so that she'll miss and run past her, although I always find that dodge really difficult when she usually hits me. Does a good 33% damage as well if she hits you, so... Try to avoid it if you can, although it is a tough one. Hopefully you've still got them heals on you if you need them. I ended up using the first aid spray heal. And... Uh, now we need to just head back to where we grabbed the shotgun shells and the flashbang a little while ago. So the zombie is going to be here now, just around this corner somewhere. And he's chilling on the left side. So I think yeah, it's just after this one. We want to stick to the right side of the scene to avoid him completely. Kind of just run in between the trees and he shouldn't be a problem for you. So for now, just keep following the path back. Through the gates. Keep going, keep going. And head through this next gate. Nothing dangerous in this area, so we're completely fine. Keep going up them stairs. Back past these two switches again. And we do come back here a little later, but it's just on the way back from... It's actually quite a ways away before we get to that point. We spend most of our time uh, in this area around the next part that we're going to go into right now. Head through these double doors. Just sort of a U-turn as you come through that one door. I'm going to skip this cutscene and just keep running forward past the dogs. You can just run forward and you'll get past them without any bother. They're a bit more of a trouble when you head back through this area, but that first time through, they're usually quite easy to dodge. So, now we're going to use the crank. I was too far away from the crank spot there, I need to move forward a bit. I'm trying to use the shotgun shells now, it's not a good idea. Probably not going to work. And once you've cranked this, you're going to get a cutscene, which you can skip, and back out of this to go around here and down the ladder now so that we can go to the residence I think it's called 
Right. So this area can be really annoying on the way back as well, just because you can end up getting poisoned here. Which is really stupid, but I think I ended up getting poisoned a few times in this run, and I thought that that was kind of ideal, just because if it happens to you and you're trying to get through this, at least you'll be able to follow me to get yourself healed. Um, I could have gone for the best segments, because I was segmenting this with saves, and just m thrown up a run where I didn't get poisoned, but I felt like it's not really much of a walkthrough to help anyone who does, you know what I mean? In real survivor mode, the blue herbs are really rare, so you need to sort of know where they are. There's a lot more of them around in normal, especially when you reach this area. I think there's a good three or four blue herbs just in this doorway when you come here on normal. Either way, we're heading in this way, and let's just pop into here and drop a quick save. There's more ink ribbons here for you. If you just want to keep it safe, there's also a flashbang on the shelf right there. Really useful items. Grab them ink ribbons and drop a quick save. Use that ink ribbon. Once you've done that, after the save, we're going to slap a bunch of stuff in the item box. Let's head around here. And put the ink ribbons in. We don't want the crank, the shotgun, or this key. We'll just keep the shotgun shells on us for now and keep going. Although, if you like, you can leave the shotgun shells there as well. Although, I'm going to be grabbing some more along the way, so it doesn't really make sense to put the ones we already have in the item box. Then we need to go through these double doors. You need to be quick through this area because the spider's in here and you don't want to get poisoned. That's why it's also a good idea to save just before this point. So if you do get poisoned, I'd recommend just loading it up and continuing. Um, just because you need to save the blue herbs for in case you get poisoned a little later. So, grab the first aid box, and the red book, and then we just need to head out the way we came. Be as quick as you can doing that, because you want to avoid that spider. He's a definite problem right there. So, once we come back out, we're going to push this box over the gap in the floor that's just here. I think I got it here, sort of an awkward position in there, I need to go back around and push it into the right place. Sort of half a push in this direction. Yeah, there we go. That should do it. And then push it over the hole in the floor. You can just run over the hole if you like. But a tentacle will grab you and it does do damage. You can just shake it off and run past. But again, just trying to keep this run as safe as possible for those who just want that achievement. Although, if you do follow along with me, you should get the under three hours run doing this as well. Pretty sure there's an achievement tied to completing the game in under five hours and completing the game in under three hours. Which, uh, this run should get both of those for you if you haven't done that yet. So, let's head through this room and into the door 002. And we're going to head into the bathroom that's on our right, right here. There's a zombie that bursts into this room that's kind of annoying. He's definitely an awkward one that gets in your way a few times, so I'd recommend just using the grenades to take him out in this room when he bursts through. So just sort of stand in front of the door after you grab that key, and wait right here for him to come in, and just let him get the grab on you, so you can stuff that grenade in his mouth to full kill him, and just run out the door. And uh, great mechanic in this game, if you shove a grenade in a zombie's mouth and then run out of a door, the game will still detect that you've killed him completely with the grenade and when you come back he won't be there at all kind of a nice mechanic would be annoying if you did that run out of the room and then he wasn't dead as if you hadn't shoved the grenade in his mouth just because you didn't wait for it to explode that would be kind of stupid but now we've got that key we're going to head back where we entered this area to head through the door we can unlock with that key we just need to jump over these boxes again make sure we don't take any damage And the door we need to go through is just opposite where we jump down, just here. And discard the key after using it. And again, when we get into this room, we're going to run straight into the bathroom. And there's another bathtub we need to drain. So let's do that. 
electrical plug. And uh, from there, you just want to keep mashing action so that you can pull this key out. Here we go. Grab the control room key and then head back out of here. You shouldn't have to worry about that zombie that's on the floor as long as you're quick. And we're just going to head out of this room now. And now that we've got that key, we're going to head back to the room where we just killed that zombie with the grenade. So I'll hop over this box again. A lot of back and forth here. And over the other side. Okay, follow the corridor around again, back to room 002. In we go. And now that we've got that control room key, we can push a couple of bookcases out of the way to find a staircase and move towards where that control room is exactly. So push this bookcase first, get it out of the way, and then push this one to the side. I'll uncover this ladder. Down we go. So, now we've done that. We're going to head all the way around here to make a little bridge out of these boxes. We can push this box along. Uh, don't push it all the way just because you need to leave enough of a gap for you to squeeze through to push the other boxes. If you do that, you're going to have to run back through the door you just came through to reset the position of the boxes. So... Push this box first. This area is always kind of boring to sit through. Just because it takes a while. Pushing all three of these. I feel like any area where you've got to push an item just seems like it takes forever. Let's just wait. And down goes that one. And last one. See what I'm saying? It feels like it takes so long. God. Right. One box bridge coming up. There he is. You have to also wait for the animation of the box bobbing about the place to finish. You've got a green hub here you can grab. Definitely pays to grab that green hub because a little later we find a red hub. And if you don't have the green hub, it's kind of stupid to grab the red one, I guess. I'm pretty sure there's not that many hubs around in this area. Skip the cutscene here and we need to follow the pathway along as soon as we skip the cutscene. Try and stay central as you're running. Um... But just avoid the wall side. Try and stick with the railing and central sort of area and you should be fine to avoid the sharks. Sometimes you might take a cheeky bite. But uh, most of the time you won't if you follow the same path that I did. It does seem a little bit random though. Sometimes they can be right on your ankles. So now that we're here, we're going to head down this ladder. This puzzle is probably one of the tougher ones in the game. First time you come across it, it's kind of hard to understand when you do know like what to do, like all the other puzzles, it's it's pretty easy to do, but if you don't know what you're doing here, it can get really confusing. But we need to press this switch first, and that'll set this cutscene up for the shark, who will no smash the glass right there. And then we need to let the... let Alexa have her, have her word with us, I guess, and then press this switch on the right spin around and then pull this level Reaching 30 of pressure threshold. once you've done that these shutters will come down and fail because of the oil pressure and on this save I'm pretty sure the number I had to press was 3 but it can be random Reaching 50 of pressure so if, threshold. if it doesn't work it, should, it will say something like nothing happened just try another number you should be okay to, to attempt all three of them and not fail this. So once you've done that, press the button on the right again. Opposite that, pull the lever. And now the shutter should come down completely once you've got the correct number. And release that oil pressure. And 
Now we can press the button over here to drain the water. And this will allow us to go back into the shark area without being numbed on. And uh, we can get we can get the assault shotgun, which is always nice. So head down these stairs, through this door. And next to... Oh, we gotta go up this ladder first. Ignore me, or through this door. Oh yeah, through these double doors first, and then we can go and grab the shotgun. So, head along the pathway here, next to this dead shark, or flippy shark, whatever. And then you will get the assault shotgun. Very nice. Now we've got that, we're gonna head this way, down these stairs into the water. And then hop up onto this ledge. And try to grab this key. The shark's gonna wig out a little bit and knock it into the water. So when that happens, you wanna push this box off the edge of this platform. And then pull the switch on your left. And that'll fry the shark up for dinner and allow you to get down there into the key. So, hop down, and head over there to where you can see that key flashing away the water. Good times. Back up these stairs, and we're heading back the way we came to get out of here. All the way around. Good times, good times. So, now that we've got the shotgun, and the residence key, the last residence key we need. We're going to go through these gated doors. And we're going to head around here to climb up this ladder. Just run around to the other side of it and go up. And we'll end up back where we created the bridge out of boxes. Unlock that door, head through. keep going back now we want to go back to the residence only a couple more things to do in that area before we uh fight plant 42 okay so up we go now that we're here we're going to run back through this bedroom and head back out this door and now we have the key for the other door that's in this hallway it's the only time we need to use the key so let's head around here Use the key and it should ask us to discard it. Discard it. It's definitely stupid to keep any of those items that you can discard just because you need extra inventory space. So, head around here, past this door, and this dead guy down at the end of this corridor is holding an insecticide spray. Grab that and then you want to quickly turn around and head back the way you came and go back out of the door you came through. Just because if you loiter around in that area, those insects are going to hurt you. They don't do a lot of damage, but it's just good to avoid them. And now we're going to head to the end of this hallway and grab the map off the wall, which will uncover a hole which we can use the insecticide on. So take the map of the residence and then use the insecticide in the same spot. And that'll kill those bugs that can attack you in the next area allowing us to run back through there and grab the key we need to get into the last room uh, before we fight plant 42 so in we go and we're going to go back down the same hallway that we grabbed the insecticide in said this time follow it all the way along this is where we just kill those insects we'll grab the residence key spin it around and then we're going to go through this door, 003. Discard the key, of course. Through we go. And now we need to use the red book in this room. On this shelf at the back, after taking the white book out. Take that. Exit that. And then use the red book. There we go. And we need to switch 
the books around a little bit to sort the order out. We're going to switch the one on the far left with the one in the middle there. And we're going to switch this one, the second one from the left, along with the second one from the right. And then the third one from the left with the very far right one to solve the puzzle. And uh, yeah, 17th century titties right there or something. I don't know. Some antique porn for you. That's what they did before Pornhub, everybody. So now we're going to go through this door and get attacked by Plant 42. Never a good time. We're going to head over to the left up this stairway to avoid him and pull out the shotgun. Again, I've, I've turned down the music in this uh, in this playthrough so you guys can listen to the noise I'm listening to. As soon as you come up here, you should be able to get a couple of shots in him. As long as you're quick up the stairs, you should be able to get a couple of shots on his weak point. But after that, you need to wait and listen for the noise of, it, of its leaves. Or you can hear the petals open. It was that noise right there. Um, if you listen to the noise, this, the plan makes before I start shooting, you should be able to clock on to other noises, so hold up. That noise right there. And then, after a few shots, this means he's the plant's pretty hurt or whatever. Save your shots and just listen for that noise. I'll be quiet for a sec. There it is again. Only managed to get a couple on him there. Again, I'll try to be quiet. There it is again. It should happen. There we go. So earlier when I was saying there's some extra shotgun shots that we ran past, uh, if you do grab those, it makes this fight a little easier, I guess. Um, you don't have to worry about missing any shots. I mean, I only had three shots left there, but you can see I've got a few extra, so it's not too much of a bother. Uh, you really just need to aim in the right place, like I was, and listen for that noise. Hopefully you guys can figure it out by me shutting my big mouth while that goes on. Right, grab that key out of the fireplace. Now the plant 42 is dead. And Rebecca's going to meet us right here. And we've also got a red herb here now that we can grab to combine with our green herb. Giving us extra heals. Good times. So now that we've got this mansion key. We can open a couple more doors in the mansion. We went through all of this just for that key. Fully worth it, of course. And we need the crank and stuff back, so... Wesker's gonna show up here, and once he does, it's gonna leave you facing the wrong way for the door you need to go through. Spin it around, head back through this door. We're gonna have to hop over these boxes one more time. Over we go. And once we're safely over, even though actually I think you can just run over the gap right there because the plant's dead now. I almost went into the wrong room. We need to go back into this room. This is the save room. And I think I dropped another save here just because we got a bunch of stuff done. I'd recommend saving it again yourself just because you've got extra ink ribbons here. Also, on the way back, you can get poisoned, uh, which you do not want. But in this box that we grabbed out of the spider room we've got a mixture of blue and green herbs it should always be that item uh, which we're going to carry with us on the way out of here in case we get poisoned by the snakes which i think i do so i put the mixed herbs away quickly grab the ink ribbons and i'll grab the rest of my inventory before we leave this place because i've got to put the ink ribbons away anyway so quick save good times gg so far go and will Right, so now we saved it, let's go put the ink ribbons away and we need to grab back the crank and the broken shotgun as well. Uh, we are going to put the other shotgun away in the other item box, but not this one, because we aren't coming back here. So don't leave anything there that um, you need. I put the mixed herb away, you can use it if you like, but we want that blue herb, blue and green herb. What might be a better idea is to keep the red, red herb that we... Uh, that we found and mix it with the green and blue one so you've got a full heal uh, but the only reason we need that anti-poison heal is because we get hit by the snakes uh, we're poisoned which is a bit of a run ender that's also kind of why we just saved it i mean a better idea really is if you get poisoned on the way back here like i did just to reload the save 
and uh, hope you don't get poisoned. But I just took it and carried on. And also, there's another place you can get poisoned a little later. We're not going to worry about that for now anyway. We're just going to head to this elevator, avoid those dogs as best as you can. Um, I'll try and explain about the poison stuff along the way. So, if you do get poisoned here like I did, uh, you can use the herb that we have. Um, that's right, that right there is where I got poisoned. Or you can just reload it. I'd recommend reloading. I took the hit, used the herb, and I was hoping I wouldn't get poisoned again on the way back, but I ended up getting poisoned again and having to travel back to the mansion to heal myself. But I'm kind of happy that happened, because that way if it happens to you, at least you're not uh, screwed into reloading. Maybe you haven't got that herb or something or whatever's happened for you to not have a poison herb on you if you get if you get poisoned. At least you can follow me and go and heal yourself. So, right now, we're going to go and get the battery from the mansion. We've got uh, a defense dagger right here. And some more shotgun shells that we can slam straight into the assault shotgun. So, grab those. I thought I grabbed these shotgun shells earlier. Or did they get... Are there two sets? I'm really not sure. Anyway... Back through this door. Maybe I didn't have space to carry him. I don't remember. Either way, we're heading back through here. The dog shouldn't be here when you come through, so just run straight for the door. And now when we get to this place, the hunters are going to show up. Which is never fun. Hunters are annoying. Uh, but we're just going to run. As soon as we skip that cutscene, run for these double doors. We need to go and sort out the broken shotgun and swap it for the real one, um, which is through this double door here. Again, you need to be quick going through those doors because there are hunters lurking. Just, if you are following me, just try and watch where I go and then replicate it yourself as fast as you can. So, into this room, which has the real shotgun hanging on the wall. There's also a defense dagger just there on the table you can grab. You need to make sure you've got the inventory slots right here because you need to take the shotgun and if you have got a full inventory there, you're not going to be able to take it so that you can put the broken shotgun on. And the only reason we really grab that shotgun is just for extra shotgun shots. I don't actually think we need to, to do that, but it does help just to have the extra shotgun shots. It makes life a little easier. And you can also kill a couple of the hunters that um, without that shotgun, you'd probably have to leave alone. So we're going back now the way we came. Uh, again, be quick, avoid those hunters. And when we come through this door, we're heading to the door that is on our right or the scene's left. This door right here. And this door's fixed now, so you can come back and through it as many times as you like. But when you come into this corridor, there's now two hunters in this area. And you want to equip the shotgun as quick as you can here. The assault shotgun. And run around this corner. Blast this hunter in the face. Do your best to take him out. He was actually dead at this point, but I thought he was still alive. And I wasted two shotgun shots to see if I had to finish him off, but uh, it's a good a good job that we've got extra shots going through this run, but it did only take me two to kill him. I just wanted to make sure he was extra dead, you know what I mean? But now we're going to put the assault shotgun away for a little bit, along with the crank. We don't need that crank just now. We will be grabbing the assault shotgun and the crank back in a little while. Um, I just wanted to leave him there so I could squeeze a first aid spray into my inventory just in case I needed it. And, uh, there's one more hunter left now in this corridor who is always up, up top when you enter this area. If you wait at the bottom of the stairs, he'll jump down to attack you and you just want to run up the stairs as he jumps. And then you can run this way, which is where the hunter's originally standing when you come into this place. So you can just follow that hallway along and get to this door at the end without having to fight him at all. You can kill him if you want to. You can use the, the assault shotgun to kill him just to get him out of the way. It's up to you. I prefer just to save the bullets and run past him. We got a green harp here, which I think I ended up just using. No? I am on caution right now, but I guess I'm holding on to that for the minute. I'm going to go through this door, use the mansion key to open that. And that will bring us into this room with this statue that we've got to push along. Um, push it all the way through. Just keep pushing it in the one direction until you can't push it anymore. When you get in here, the walls close in and... Uh, you don't want to get caught on the other side of this statue. 
by running around it before the walls closed. Because you will die. So. Once that's there, spin it around, head back out, and we're going to run around this side of the walls. And there's a switch just here we need to press. Press that, and then we're going to go back out of here quickly so we don't get squished all the way around and to the right side of this statue. I actually ran around the wrong side there, but you just need to push it over this side to the left, get it on top of this square panel on the floor. And that will complete the puzzle, open up this wall, and allow you to go through. If you're playing on another difficulty, there's a defense dagger or a grenade right there on the cabinet, but on real survivor mode, it's not there. And we're going to grab this book that's on the floor when we come down this hole. And I'm going to use this green hub to get myself back up to fine condition. Exit out of the document you pick up when you examine this uh, stone on the floor. Press the switch, that'll open it up for you to go down and continue on. So right now, we're moving towards getting the battery. And also a couple of other items. When you get down here, you want to move through quick, just because there are spiders. And if you're quick about it, you don't have to engage with any of them. Just run that path that I just did there. And uh, you'll be good to go. Run straight past them all. And this is another tricky zombie hallway. You've got another blue herb there that you could grab and combine with the green herb uh, that we just used to save another poison herb, if you want to. That's another place where you can get an easy anti-poison herb. I probably should have grabbed that one. If I'd, if I'd have grabbed that herb and combined it with the green herb we just used, I probably wouldn't have got poisoned later or had to take so much of a detour. But either way, we're going to run around that zombie. I used a dagger to get past him, um, and I got lucky getting past those two right there. But uh, you just kind of want to stick to the left side when you're running past that one zombie and do your best to run past them both on your way out. It's kind of a difficult one. They can be in different places. Um depending on what happens as you run through. Then when you come into here, you're going to have a zombie shuffling towards you. If you wait by this fridge, by the corner, he should either lunge at you as he approaches the corner. If he doesn't, when he gets close, just run away from the fridge, and you should be able to sort of circle around him and just get down the corridor to get around here and get into the elevator. So yeah, if you can, um, if you've got the inventory space, grab that blue herb. Although at the moment I think our inventory space is tight, which is probably why I didn't grab it. Um, although it won't hurt to combine it with that green herb and hold on to it. When you come out of the elevator there, try and do a quick turn and run in the direction that I just did. Most of the time you'll get past that zombie, but I actually got unlucky and got grabbed by him there. And then we're going to come into this room and grab the shotgun shells. There's also a flash grenade on the floor, but I think I missed it. I think I ended up not taking it with me. I've already got a few, um, but it's a good idea to grab that grenade. I, I completely missed it and must not have caught my eye. But they are very useful, so grab one of those or grab that. They don't take, take up any inventory space. Make sure you grab it. Although you don't really need it. It's still useful to have to fight against unlucky zombie grabs, but yeah, I... I didn't grab that one. So right now we're back in this hallway that's always really awkward. We're going to head all the way through and we're going to have to go back to where we used the imitation key earlier. Somehow, that was a grab from the back. Don't ask me. Don't. I have no idea how. I have no idea how that was a grab from the back when I was heading directly towards him. But whatever game, your mechanics are weird. We're going to go back to this door and I'm all in danger and stuff. So I'm going to use this first aid spray that we've got on us. Uh, that herb is still there outside that door that I could grab on the way out as well. So, let's use that mansion key. Now that that's done, we're going to go and fight Yawn. Which is a very easy fight considering a quickie shotgun at this point. It's easier to do it before you run into the room, or you can just do it as soon as you gain control. As soon as you can, unload a couple of shots on Yawn and then run away and head down the ladder. Uh, and then when you come down here, just run forward a little bit and you should trigger this camera angle, leaving you with a perfect lineup on Yawn just to keep blasting him with the shotgun. And after a few shots, he'll be dead. 
Done and done. So this is why I had to manage it really tight in this area. Um, haven't got a lot of space. If you carry in a healing item, you'll probably be out of space. Unequip the shotgun so you can move faster and grab the book that drops when you kill Yawn. He smashes it out of the bookcase for you. Cheers, mate. Appreciate that. And then we're going back to the ladder that we came down originally. Quite an easy fight with the shotgun. Definitely a lot tougher with the knife. If you've ever done that, it's kind of a nightmare. So now we're going to head through this door. Back through the one we came in. And we have to run through that hallway. Or at least a part of it one more time. Definitely one of the more awkward hallways in the game. So down these stairs. And when you go through this door. You need to swing uh, around to the left. And make a U-turn to get to the door. That's right around the corner. Ended up taking this green herb here. So, we need to make it to that door. Again, this guy manages to grab me. It's really annoying. Very frustrating, but we just need to get to the door that I just went through there. If you're lucky, you can just swing around that corner, mash the open button, and be where you need to be. Okay, ended up using that green hub there, and we need to go into this room now, using the mansion key. And when we're in here, we're going to turn the light switch off that's on our immediate left when we come in and then there's also a defense dagger in the back of this room that you can grab and here we go and now we want to push this box along to the far wall and now we need to run around the room to get the eagle to follow us just like that and then stick underneath him as close as you can to the wall that I just walked along. Jump on top of the box and quickly grab the jewel from the deer's eye. If the eagle is looking at you, or whatever it is, I'm not sure what animal that is, I think it's an eagle, uh, you won't be able to remove the red jewel, so you need to trick it by running around the room like we just did and turning the light switch off. Should allow you to grab that red jewel. So now, we need to head back out of this place. There's no longer zombies in this hallway, which is really nice. If you head downstairs, uh, you'll end up coming across two more hunters, but we don't need to go downstairs right now. I don't think we go back down there at all, to be honest. So there are hunters here as well now. If you come in from this direction, you can just run past this one because he's not facing you when you come in and just head straight for the door. It's a bit trickier when you come back the other way because he's just chilling in the way of you. Um, but coming through that way isn't really a problem. So now we need to head back towards, uh, I think this door down here on the right side of the stairs and this will be the last use for this the last use for this mansion key and we're going to head through here so that we can get the jewelry box out of this room to combine with the red jewel and um get an item we need so this is where i ended up having to backtrack to unpoison myself in a little while you'll see exactly what i mean if you keep watching it's a good idea to take note of this room if you get poisoned and don't know where to go. Blue herbs are growing in this room. And you can come back here to get yourself healed, which is what I ended up doing. Um, but I'm going to grab that defense dagger. The jewelry box is just uh, on the shelf right there. This zombie is kind of dumb, and you can lead him around quite easily. He just sort of wanders around in circles. Or there is, although there is a defense dagger on the floor, if he does get a grab on you or whatever, try to grab that as well. There's a green herb in there as well if you want that. Now we're going to combine these two, and we're going to have to do this puzzle. So, grab yourself this piece and rotate it and slot it in at the bottom, right here. Try to make space for the other pieces when you're doing the adjustment right here. Just think about uh, how the other pieces are going to fit in. You should see what I mean in a second. Now we're going to grab this piece and slot it in this way. And when it gives you the ability to just press it in, uh, just press the button and then use the adjustment to make space for the other pieces like I need to move that one up a bit There we go And this bit goes down here on the right. You can see what I mean by making space for the other pieces and This bit goes in the middle. We need to rotate that up a little bit. There we go That just fits right in there 
And the last piece is on the left. Rotate that a couple of times. And there we go. Done and done. I've got a brooch. Changed into a key. Nice. Okay, so now we're just going to leave this area. I do end up actually coming back here, even though you don't need to. I was having some trouble finding my way around this desk, apparently. There we go, back to the door we came in through. And we're going to take the crow room again now. And head back to place the battery into the elevator room. So we need to go up these stairs and through the door that's at the top of the stairs. Yeah, kind of awkward getting poisoned again. I think I got poisoned like three times in this run. And two of the times it wasn't really a problem. But like I said, it's kind of ideal. Just so that if it does happen to you in a worst case scenario, at least... I'm including how to get yourself out of it, you know what I mean? More shotgun shells right there. Grab those. Always useful. And because we've got four shots left in this shotgun, uh, we can use it to kill one of the hunters because we're just going to put this shotgun away now and replace it with the assault shotgun. We only really needed to use that shotgun for yawn, just for the extra six shots that it gives us. And... Uh, don't ask me why I just... Yeah, I think I took a wrong turn there. I should have just gone through the crow door. But I ended up going back through this door by mistake. So yeah, grab those shotgun shells if you haven't already. Or if you already have, you're just going to come through and go through this door to go back to the crow room. And I'm having troubles here, man. I'm all over the place. <laughs> it's kind of easy to get turned around uh, in this run because there's so much running through the same areas. It's so easy to just run through the wrong door, but... Doesn't happen a lot through this run. I think it only happens like once or twice. Luckily, I didn't get mixed up with any of the item runs. So, when you come through here, you're in a perfect position to shoot this hunter in the face. So, equip the shotgun if you've got any shots left in it. And blast this hunter away. He still managed to get a swipe on me. The bastard. I think he's done for. Right, so... We're going to go to the item box that's through this door. You should only have the one hunter in this area. And he's up top, so you haven't got to worry about him. You should just have a clean route to this item box again. We need to come back here anyway to get the crank back. But we're going to put this shotgun away. Make sure you haven't reloaded it. And put these two books away as well, because we don't need those till a little bit later. And... We need the crank back. I ended up combining those shotgun shells with my shotgun, so I had at least 10 in the clip. I was kind of messing up a little bit here, but yeah. Combine those. There we go. Finally got there in the end. And grab the crank. Uh, I don't think there's anything else we need here. You can take the mixed hub, if you like, for a little bit of extra health. I think, yeah, that's what I did. I've tried my best to conserve uh, those health items. And these two item boxes... That you've seen us come back and forth from are the ones that I usually use just to stash all my stuff in because you have to come back to them a good couple of times anyway. Uh, even though the item boxes aren't linked, you still end up only really using that one for the most part. So now we're heading back this way where we use the stone and metal object. The hunter isn't there to get in our way, which is always good. And now that we're here, we're going to push through, keep going, and... Uh, I don't think the dog spawns in again, but as long as you're quick, even if he does, you shouldn't have a problem. So this is another point in the game where you can get poisoned coming up. It's a very annoying thing to happen. Uh, a very annoying thing to have happen. And I'm pretty sure it happened to me. We had to head back to the mansion, which is kind of a detour at this point, but it's fine. I will say if you're following this for the walkthrough... And uh, you don't need to travel back to the mansion. You might want to just skip ahead a couple of minutes until I come back. I'll show you. I will let you know when that's coming. You'll see me get poisoned just here in a second. Um, but for the mo for most of this, still, you will have to follow along. So, be careful here. The idea to apparently avoid the poison is to stick, the stick to the left there and then take a diagonal path through that section and try to avoid the snakes. I can never seem to avoid them, though. And that's where I took another poison. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to have to go back to the mansion to get another blue herb so that we don't have to worry about that. But I thought I'd go ahead and do the the battery part first so I could actually show you guys how to do it without having to backtrack and come back here. So we need to slam the battery in here, use it, 
and then into the elevator that's just next to us. Almost got grabbed as well. I'm pretty sure the dogs were giving me a hard time after getting poisoned as well. Even if your condition is fine and you get poisoned, you'll still run as if you're in orange caution, which is annoying. Right, so we're going to come through here. There's getting grabbed first time by the dogs. Good, good times, good times. And uh, now we need to go over here and crank one more time. Get off me, dog. Yeah. Hey, RLC, I still got. They're so broken. Dogs are so broken. It's kind of a problem where if you get grabbed by a dog, when you shake them off, you're sort of stunned for a second, which just opens you up to getting grabbed again by another dog. If you're really unlucky, you can just get chain grabbed about three or four times, which is really annoying. So, use the crank, and that's going to turn the water. Well, it's going to fill the water back into this pool again and allow you to cross in the area where we just put the battery. But first, I've got to deal with this poison problem. So now, if you're following along for the walkthrough, you will have to go back this way just like I am. But you're going to go back towards the elevator, whereas I'll head back to the mansion quickly. I should It should only take me... I think it only takes me a minute or so. It's really not that far, but... At least I've included it in case this happens to any of you. Like I said, you're going to be heading right down towards that elevator. You might want to, I don't know, pause up and wait for it or skip ahead a minute or two until I come back through these doors that we've just gone through now. Because um, you don't need to follow me if you haven't got poisoned. Right, so extra hassle. Let's go. We're going to head back through this area and back towards the crow room so that we can get into the main hall. I think this is the only spot on real survivor mode where the blue herbs are actually growing. I'm not sure where I was going right now. I'm getting a bit turned around. I need to go to the crow room. I think at this point I was like, oh, I need to get poison. What's the quickest way to get to those growing blue herbs? Because in this mode, there's so few, so, so few. If I would have grabbed that one a little earlier that was in that hallway, I might have been okay, but... Either way, it doesn't really matter. Heading back this way. And I've also got that mixed herb on me that we can save for when I use the blue herbs, heal myself, and then I can use the mixed herb to get back to fine condition. So, we're going up here towards the main hall door to rid ourselves of this poison inconvenience. Definitely a struggle. So, down these stairs, and we're going to head over to the right side to go through this door that we just went through to go and get the jewelry box. It's kind of annoying that you can't pick the growing herbs. You can't pick one and take it with you. That would be useful. But uh, instead we have to come back here through this door and all the way around to depoison ourselves. There we go. Neutralize the poison in your body. There's also a green herb there if you want it. We didn't use it before. Get back past this guy. Very frustrating to have yourself get poisoned twice. And uh, now we're going to heal up to get healthy again. Lovely. Let's go. Sorted. So now we shouldn't have to worry about getting poisoned again. There's only one more place we can get poisoned. And guess what? I got poisoned there. Um... But it's it's really easy to unpoison yourself because there's another blue herb right next to it and a green herb as well. So you'll see that as we approach it. It's also quite easy to get poison there. It's when you fight the big spider. Uh, but like I said, there's a blue herb right next to it, so you don't have to worry. All right, down we go. Back to where we were a second ago. Luckily, this... Even even though I've had to take this slightly longer route, we didn't lose out on the under three hours or anything. It only takes a minute or two. Not adding a lot of time at all. So let's head through here. And back through this door. Sorry about the detour. But like I said, I was kinda happy it happened. For walkthrough purposes. Back around here. Back through this door. And finally we are back. I'm going to head through these double doors.
And now we're going to head to the left right here to get to this elevator. And because we did all that stuff earlier, uh, the waterfall won't be there. And we can just head through now. Because we've got the battery in this elevator. Dog grabbing me again. Cheers, dog. Appreciate it. Much love. All the way down here and down this ladder. And we are heading through the door that was just on our on the left side of the scene there, or on our right. But uh, there's also a typewriter and an ink ribbon just ahead if you do want to go and save it. The area that I almost ran to just there, it's up to you. There are three ink ribbons there. I do save it in a minute, I just want to go and grab the crank first. Although, after you grab the crank and come back towards the time to save it, hunters have spawned, so... I wouldn't blame you if you ran around that corner and dropped a save before you went and did this. But either way... Push through here. And then we're gonna head around here. I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Guys. Sorry about that. Skip those cutscenes, grab that ca uh, crank that's on this guy, and when you head back, a hunter's gonna jump through the door. Just keep running, keep running past him. Try to stick to the left side of the scene. And you should be able to, or either side really, you should just be able to sail past him. Because he jumps through the door and screams at you, giving you plenty of time to get past that guy. So, now we're going to head back the way we came. And when we go through this door, there's another two hunters that come through. And I think I almost got hit by one, but it's because I was a little sloppy with my run through. Um, I'll just try to run up the stairs and then head to the our right but the scenes left to go back through this door and you should avoid those hunters quite easily just by running past them again that's why you might want to drop a save before you go and do that because they can always hit you and do a big damage attack but we got ink ribbons right here if you want to grab those drop yourself a quick save like I did let's go Just in case anything bad happens, you can always just come back to this point. Less frustration, you know what I mean? Alright, let's head to the item box, and we're going to put the ink ribbons away, along with the green crank. We need to keep the crank, or well, the hex crank, or the crank with the red end. Um, so we can use it here. I don't think I'm close enough. There we go. And you only need to crank this once. Once you've done that, head through here. And there's also a green herb right here on the floor that you're going to want to grab. Make sure you grab that guy uh, because you can get poisoned in this next room. Or maybe it's the, I think it's the one after this. And uh, you need that green herb to combine with the blue herb you can find just in case that happens. So grab the flamethrower off the wall. Follow this path up to the top where the boulder is. Spin it around. And once you come back down, it's going to chase you. Just keep running and uh, head back towards the door you came through to cue that cutscene, save yourself. Don't drag across the wall as you go through there because uh, you'll end up getting caught on the wall more than likely. Try to just run, run straight down the hallway and then turn back towards the door you came through. And then we're going to follow the boulder down the way it went and go through this door, which is going to lead us into the big-ass spider room. So you have a choice here whether to fight the spider or to run away from it. We're just going to run away from it. Because the fight from it takes up too much resources. Grab the flamethrower once you approach this door. We've just been poisoned, I think. We need to burn these webs off the door using the flamethrower. And then escape through this door. We do have to run back past the spider in a minute. Um, this is kind of why we dropped a save a minute ago. Just because uh, you can get poisoned two more times doing this. So it's up to you how you handle it, if you want to reload it, if you do get poisoned. I just thought I'd include it. There's a blue herb right there. Nice and easy to cure yourself of poison. And we're all good to go now. So we need to use the flamethrower on this switch. I obviously didn't want to let go of it, let go of it because I was just running straight past the switch. And I don't think I approached this correctly. You should just be able to press action on the switch. And it'll ask you for the flamethrower. It's the only switch that does that, though. There are other switches that use the same mechanic that you've got to put stuff on like that. And... Uh, you have to go into the menu and select it. It won't just give you the option if you just press action on it. 
Either way, following this corridor around, we need to use the crank on this crank hole three times. There's one. There's two. And one more time. And once you've done this, the boulder is going to start coming towards you. Once you gain control of Chris or Jill, whoever you're using, um, just run forward. Don't try and mess around with directions. The game will put you in such a position so you can literally just run forward and escape that boulder by running into the hole on the side. If you come up to where the boulder is, there's a sneaky first aid box which has a first aid spray in it. Very useful. Big value right there. Thank you. Look at that big value. So, we're heading back this way and through the door that we just uncovered using the crank. And we're going to push a couple of items around in this room to get the... Is it the I think it's the cylinder that's in this room, right? And we need to head to this side of the room and push this statue a few times over towards this block that's in the wall on the left side of the room right there. And then use the crank to push it a little further into the room so we can maneuver it around more. And that's the... I think that's the last use of the crank. So we can slam that in an item box after this room. So get behind the statue and push it a couple of times in this direction. Run around to the other side of it. And we need to push it towards this uh, circular stone so that it will spin it 90 degrees and then we're going to push it off of that circular stone from the back just like this and then we're going to go back to the front of it and push it back on which will spin it another 90 degrees and then push it from the side this way to about there and hopefully now, when you push it, it'll end up in the right position straight away. Which will uncover this panel on the wall, giving you the cylinder. Here we go. Let's grab that bad boy. Thank you. And we're going to head back this way. Now that we've done that, we're going to head all the way back through the stuff we've just come through. It's like back past the spider and everything. So, uh, yeah, another situation where you can get poisoned. I didn't, I didn't get poisoned here for once. Aren't I lucky? So we're going back this way to uh, just literally run straight through this room to get to the other side. I got really lucky there and he dived and missed. Haha, <laughs> F you spider. I think when he does that dive attack, it only does damage and it won't poison you. I think it's the, sp the spit attack from the spiders that poisons you. Be quick through here because you've got a hunter chilling in the hallway. We want to go back past where we grabbed the flamethrower from originally and through the door there. Keep running all the way through here and it's up to you if you want to save it here. I didn't. I just kept going. You can always drop a save there if you want to after all of that mess that we've just done. Um, you can also put the crank in that box if you don't want to carry it around anymore. But I held on to it for another minute or two. Alright, so I took a wrong turn there. We actually want to head down the stairs this way. Luckily the hunters are just really stupid and missed everything on me. But yeah, you want to head into that area and downwards rather than up that path. And now that we're here, we're going to head straight over to this console and it'll ask you to open up this lid and you'll get the shaft which you can combine with the cylinder and then use stick it back in the machine, it's going to fire up and you need to press the buttons in the order 4, 2, 3, 1 and that'll bring the elevator up So, once that's done, we're going to head over to that. Press the switch, down we go. 
We've got another encounter coming up with Liso, which is never fun. Let's go. We took a wrong turn there. I'm getting a bit turned around. We need to go to the white door. Yeah, I, there's an item box right there as well if you want to go and uh, stash anything away, but we need to go through this white door first. Once we're through here, we need to follow this path around. And Lisa can spawn in a couple of places. If you head to your left just there, she'll spawn there, which is where we want her right now. If you do that and then just head back this way, you're free to follow this path around to get to this door. Whereas if you just head to the right where you've got that sort of split, she can spawn just there and really get in your way and you don't want that. We don't want that at all. So we're going to come into this door, into this room, and we need to push this box onto the elevator thing over there. Another boring pushing box, pushing item area. Always feels like it takes forever. It's so slow pushing these boxes. Or any item, really. There we go. Master Chief reduced to loading and unloading boxes. What have we come to? So let's push that on there. Press the button. And the game makes you stand here and wait for this to finish. Even when it's not on screen. Safety first, Master Chief. So now that that's done, follow this round, back out the door we came through. And we've got to get back, uh, back past Lisa again. This area is a bit more troubling to get past her. She might get a hit on you. And she does do like 33% damage. When you come around here, she's going to be here. Try to approach her and get her to swing. Or run past her. That swing is really difficult to dodge. It has uh, a lot of... I think it's called kill frames. And basically, even when she's right at the end of her swing and you think you're going to be okay to run past her, it will still hit you. It's really, really frustrating. You should see that in a moment when I next have to go past her. Back towards the elevator anyway, and we're going back towards the item box that I mistakenly ran towards earlier. Down this ladder to find the box we pushed earlier. Here's one I made earlier. Push this all the way along. In this direction. And then we need to push it underneath this compactor. Let's get her doing. And then press the switch. Very good. And then... We'll hop down there and uh, grab that broken flamethrower. And Q. Spin it around. Hop back up. And follow this around. Back to that white door where Lisa is lurking. So you should see what I was talking about with the... Uh, her swing. And how it's kind of BS to try and dodge. You really have to wait for the right timing on it, which I messed up a good couple of times during this run. Uh, but again, we need to use the same trick where we run around this first part, and when we get to here, head to the left, so that she spawns there, and then turn around, head around back this way, and press the switch that's on the wall. And when you pull this, this thing that holds the flamethrower is going to push out and you've got 15 seconds to get to it. We're going to go back this way. And she's right here now. We need to try and do the same thing. See what I mean? How she'd finished the swing and she still hit me, even though I, I thought it was, like, well-timed to go past her. It's kind of stupid. But whatever. We're all good. Use the first aid spray because we got pretty hard there. Put the broken flamethrower on that switch and we can proceed through this door. And now we need to run through here. Pretty much just run around this creepy looking room. And keep moving here. You want to move to your left. Keep running. And left again. Snakes behind you, but as long as you're quick, they can't catch up to you. And then as soon as you come in, head to the right side of this room to grab the jewelry box. And uh, we want to examine that and look at the top of it so we can open it and get the... Is it the metal circle? Or the stone or the stone ring? Nice. Up we go. 
Also, I think if you head to your right at the top of that ladder, there's herbs, like at the other end of this corridor, but we just head to the exit. So if you want, you are hurt and you want an extra med, you might want to look there. I'm not sure if it's there on real survival, but uh, if you are hurt, it's worth having a look, I guess. Okay, so we're now back in Lisa's cabin and we're going to hop up here and pretty much just exit the cabin straight away. I think I got stuck on like every single possible wall here. I was getting really turned around. So, okay, okay, figure this out. You can do this. It's just a room. There we go. <laughs> got there in the end. So now, follow this around. All the way around, through this door. And we're heading back along this path with that one lonely zombie on it. To get back to the mansion now. So, we have been through this before. We're going to keep going. Sort of a shortcut there. It's like a set of stairs you can take. That I, I, that's the much shorter way to get through this. Um, I didn't take those the first time. Okay, so follow this through to get to the gate. And there's now a zombie on the other side of this gate. I just ran straight past him, although you might want to move to the right or left to take him a little wider. I was dangerously close to getting grabbed right there. All right. So, directly opposite, through this gate now, and keep going, follow this all the way back around. We are literally just going back to the mansion now. Uh, there is a moment coming up where Lisa can one-hit kill you whilst you've got to push some stones off of a platform. So it's a good idea to go and save it just before we go and deal with that, but you'll see exactly what I do coming up coming very very soon in this run so now we're back at the mansion hopefully you've dealt with the hunter that was here so he's not going to be a bother to you after you go through the next door we need to grab the stone and metal object before we leave this area grab that head towards the door back into here yeah like I said hopefully you've dealt with this hunter so he's not in your way it's definitely one of the more troublesome hunters in this run. There's not really many of them you have to deal with. So now uh, we can open up this door using the emblem key. It's the only use for that key, so discard it. And I'm going to come through here and we'll get, we'll get a quick cutscene of Rebecca screaming. We're not going to save her because we're just going for the quickest ending possible. We're not going for the good ending. If you do want to go and save her, she's in the room where the dog whistle is if you want to go and save her, but I'm not going to... We're just uh, being selfish and saving ourselves. So grab the metal object off the side there. There's also a flash grenade sitting on the shelf right there as well. Grab that. They're always useful. And combine these two together. Save yourself an inventory slot. Head back out of this room. And now we're going back to the main hall. And what we'll do here is... We'll, first of all, head through the crow room. I don't know where I'm going right now. Oh, uh, do I head? Oh, actually, yeah, we would need to go this way to the item box. I almost forgot about that. It's a good job I remembered in game, I guess. <laughs> Back to the item box, and you should have two free spaces in your inventory to put um, the last last volume books in there. The red and the blue books. There they are. Last book, volume one and two. Get them in your inventory. You can also put away the crank now. Don't need that. I switched it for that one lonely shotgun shell that we have. We're about to put these two... Um, these two books... Oh, no, these two stone and metal objects into the door they need to go into. So we're going to free up two slots in the inventory right now anyway. But we'll go and do that. And after you head through that door, you've got a boss battle coming... Uh, in which you can die really easily if you're not careful. So we'll go and save it just before that, just to be extra safe. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a second. Let's follow the crow room around again. And back through the gate that's at the end of here. Let's get back to that main hall. So only about, I think about 15 minutes left of the run now. Really not that much left at all. And we're going back up these stairs. Is this the final time we come here? I think it might be the final time we actually mess around in the mansion at all. So if there's anything in the item boxes that you desperately want, I guess now would be the time to get them out. Although you should be good to go. There's more than enough stuff to do what we need to. 
uh, in this next area. So let's slap these stone and metal objects into this door that's underneath the stairs. And once you've done that, the door will unlock. But before we go and mess around with Lisa there, I'm going to go and drop a save. So the, the quickest place for us to get to with ink ribbons and a typewriter is um, in the area, I think, that we got the serum from in that safe room. There's one ink ribbon left there. And... Uh, well, yeah, that's all we need, the ink ribbon. <laughs> run past this hunter. You should be good just to run straight past him. He sort of stands there screaming at you for a second before he attacks, which gives you a big opening just to run straight past him. So, we're going all the way around and down the stairs. There shouldn't be anything else here that gets in your way. Let's keep going. And into the safe room. Just to drop that save. Like I said, you really don't want to end up messing up in this next area and dying and have to replay a bunch of stuff. I'll just grab that ink ribbon. And use it. Very nice, very nice. So, now we're heading back to that door that we just unlocked. Now, if you do die on this next part, which is quite easy to do, um, or it is quite easy to die on, should I say, at least you can reload it and just go and try it again, you know what I mean? So, we're going back the way we just came. We've got to run past that hunter again, but this time he's facing the opposite direction, which means he's even easier to get past. You just pretty much just stick to the left of him and keep going. Let's do that. Keep following this. Good times, good times. Okay, so back underneath the stairs. Very Harry Potter of us, I know. Oh, there we go. It's <laughs> getting a little bit turned around there. Follow this around. Door is now unlocked. We get to listen to Lisa moaning at us before we go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Open it. Okay, so down these stairs. Don't worry about that item box. And keep following this around. All the way down. And head this way to climb through this door. Cl climb through a door, can you? I don't think that's how that works, but hopefully you can follow my gibberish. And we're actually climbing down a ladder right now. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> Let's go down there, and uh, this is going to trigger a cutscene when we get to the bottom. Skip that, and right now we need to push these stones pretty damn fast. We need to do this one first. It's on the right close right and then we'll do the close left one and doing it in this order hopefully gets her aggressive to Wesker and not you but if she gets close to you run the hell around her and just come over here to push this one off the edge from this direction and then we're going to do this one and as soon as you get all of these pushed off you're done here no more worries Not too sure what that was all about, but see you later, mate. Have a good one. So, if you do that, we need to go uh, through the gate that was just unlocked, first of all. But if you do that with Jill and you've saved Barry, Barry will show up there to help you instead of Wesker. Obviously, F Wesker. If he gets knocked off the edge, it doesn't matter. It doesn't count towards your ending as Chris. But if you're doing it as Jill and you've got Barry there... Um, if Barry gets knocked off, it counts towards your ending. So it's a little more troublesome as Jill to get that bit done. As Chris, it's quite easy to do it and just let um, just let Wesker get knocked off the edge. Okay, so we're going to open up the book and use it on this side of the fountain here. It's the blue one for this side and the red one for the other side. Right here. 
crank it open, get that out of there. Give me some of that. Cheers, mate. Skip that cutscene. And then we're going to head down these stairs to get to the lab. This is the last area of the game. We are really, really close to having this done. I think we've got like 10 minutes left or so, maybe a little bit more. If you're going for the good ending, this area can take a little bit longer and it's generally tougher, but I'd recommend trying to get the good ending on very easy or easy just because you don't get screwed over as much by enemies. And uh, real survivor, it's a bit of a joke to get done, to be honest. Although it can be done, I just feel like it's easier to do those good ending achievements on easier game modes than this one. Okay, so we're heading through those obvious doors as we come down here. There's a few zombies lurking around. Do your best to avoid them. Hopefully you've got your defense daggers if they get a cheeky grab on you like they did me. And we're going to come down here now to go through this door. Again, zombies on stairs are really easy to beat. So either just before you go through this door or just after, it doesn't really matter. Equip the grenades out of your defense items if you have them if you don't you're going to want to blast this zombie away with your shotgun but you need to kill that zombie do not leave that zombie standing don't try and dodge him just kill him however you can easiest way is with a grenade just like i just did if you haven't got those shotgun him in the face man just just get him killed you need to kill that guy 100 it just gets in your way later so we're going to use this computer right now, and the login is John, and the password is Ada. So it's on screen for what the login is. Pretty self-explanatory. You can't see the password, so it's A-D-A. -A. As in Ada. And then the computer is going to ask you for another password, which is Cell. C E double L. And then we can uh, access both of these floors. We need to click on both of them. B to F. That's just opened up for us. And we'll do the third floor as well. Great thing about this game is uh, the codes don't change between playthroughs. Um, good times. Also, there's an image of Master Chief on the left. And I'm not sure why. Or is that his reflection? Could be his reflection. Probably. Yeah. And newer Resident Evil games. If you try and do stuff like that where you use... A code you know from a previous run it will change the code on you which is annoying now we're going to head back the way we came through these gated doors and up the stairs and we need to go and grab a key from a room that's up here so up here there's any zombies on the stairs squeeze past those try to stick to your left as you come to this area i ended up getting grabbed by this guy so i thought effort he can have a grenade but if you stick to your left you can just avoid getting grabbed usually by that one um, but I think I've got plenty of grenades to deal with the zombies that get in our way right now. So we're going to come into this room and we need to use this terminal. And the password is 8462. Which will open the secret room at the back, allowing you to grab the key that is inside there. Go ahead and get in there, grab that key. Good times. And then we're going to leave. That's all we needed out of this room. We can just head out. And we've got to go back down those stairs that we just came up a second ago. Down we go. Very nice. So we're going to follow the path that we just took a second ago. This will let us avoid another zombie that's here. I think I got turned around here. I turned around here and went uh, somewhere that we've got to go in a moment and not right now. So we ignore this. Don't go this way. Um, I guess just wait a second until I come to my senses and go the right way. Don't worry. I, s I start heading back right now. Yeah, I got a bit turned around and I was a bit confused. I, was like, I got to here and I was like, what? Where am I going? So... Yeah, don't go in. don't go that way like I just did. You don't need to go that way. Uh, this way. Sorry about that. It did only happen a couple of times throughout the run where I got turned around. Right. So, 
follow this pathway around, but we're going right at the end this time, instead of left, and we're going to go through this door, which we have the lab key for. Good times. So once that cranks open, head through here, and you've got another zombie that you've got to kill. You can either use the grenades or use a shotgun. I think I've used both of my grenades now, so I'm going to have to use the shotgun. And I ended up blowing his face off, which is never disappointing in this game. So he's dead. Again, you need to kill that zombie. Make sure you kill him. If you don't, he can cause big problems in a moment. So we've got a Chimera to kill in this room as well. Equip your shotgun again if you've de-equipped it like I just did. And we need to blast this fool away. Usually takes two close range shotgun shots. So line it up and rip his face off. Right, so now we need to grab this tank out of this uh, console right here. And there we go. And we're going to head back out the way we came. Again, make sure that Chimera is dead. I got a little bit turned around here, but back through the door. Just wanted to do a full circle for good measure. And uh, now we've got to go and fill up the capsule. And when you get this thing full... It, uh, you can't be grabbed and you can't run, which is why we've been killing a couple of these zombies. Because we need to be able to get through without the risk of being grabbed, you know what I mean? So, now that we've got the capsule, we're going to go back this way, through this tight corridor right here. And we're going to go through that door that I mistakenly went through a second ago. Um, when I got turned around. Again, sorry about that. So, keep going. And we're going through this door at the end that's on my right right now, this one. good times and there's another zombie in here we need to kill so whip that shotgun out I almost got grabbed by him, that's not good whip that shotgun out shoot him until he dead, look out for that blood seeping out of him on the floor only took one close range shot for me which was very lucky let's de-equip the shotgun also I slammed that extra shotgun shot into the shotgun just so I'm not carrying around one shell let's uh, open up this thing and slam the container in it. In it goes. Lovely. Got the fuel supply capsule. Very nice. Okay, skip, skip, skip. Get rid of all this stuff. So, do not run after you've done this. Just walk. You can get away with running a few steps, but if you, I think if you go for four steps, you'll end up blowing up. Three is fine, and then you need to walk another three, and then you can run another three. But just to make it easier, just walk. I feel like it's just easier to walk. I'm not really bothered about getting, you know, the world record speed time or anything, so... It's just easier to walk. So we're going to go back to where we originally got the capsule from, to put the now full capsule in place. We shouldn't have any zombies in the way along the way. That's why we killed that zombie that was in that hallway... It's also why we killed the one uh, that's just through here. And why we killed that Chimera as well. Let's keep going. Down the stairs. Again, don't run. Till you've used this capsule. back over to where we grabbed it. There is another Chimera in this room, but it won't approach you if you don't go towards it. You have to go to the other side of the room for it to get ag aggressive towards you. As long as you stick to this side, you'll be fine. Set the capsule into place. There we go. Spin it around, and now we're going to go to the other side of this room. And through the door just here. There's a few Chimera in this room. Or these locust bug lookalikes, whatever they are. Uh, you can just run past them all. We're just going to head this way around all of these guys. A couple of them drop in, but like I said, just keep running. Their attacks are really slow and easy to dodge. So just keep moving. They're even stupider than the hunters. And then you'll come into this room and you want to run around this way. Chimera was right in my face there. You saw how slow its attack was. We're going to start up this console and then turn around and run around the opposite side of this room to get back to the door 
that we originally came through. Again, just run past those enemies, don't worry about them. Back the way we came then, through here, around this path again. There's slow attacks, super slow attacks. They're all chasing us, but they're not going to catch us. So as soon as you come through this door, just keep running straight. We'll go back to the door we originally came from. Here we go. And now that you've powered up that elevator, the one zombie that was in this hallway is now gone. He was originally just chilling up here. Also, before you go to the elevator, you've got another save point here with ink ribbons. If you want to drop it, uh, a save before we fight the last boss we're going to have to fight, now is the time to do it. You've also got a first aid spray here, shotgun shells on the floor. It's good times. Got plenty of shotgun shells to deal with this boss now. Don't need to use that. We'll combine this with the shotgun. So we've got 10 in and 3 spare. Uh, ink ribbons are on the other side of the table right there. And let's use those. Get one last save in. I was going to go and check the item box, but then I realized there's nothing in it. Because uh, none of them are linked. <laughs> so let's use the uh, ink ribbon. Here we go. That should be our last save. Once we're done there, we're going to slam the ink ribbons in the item box because we don't want to carry those anymore. And now we're going to head towards the elevator, go up there and deal with the final boss we'll have to deal with. If you go for the good ending, uh, you have to fight another boss. But if you just do this ending, you only have to fight the boss that's ahead of us now makes this run a lot easier and getting this achievement a hell of a lot easier as well. The elevator is working. Okay, let's approach it. Hit the action button and up we go. Okay. So, now we're going to follow this around. And when you open up this door, you're going to trigger a few cutscenes. If you don't want to watch those, skip them all. Just like I'm going to. Should have three. And then once you gain control, just run straight. And you'll run past the tyrant, run around the room. And head to this area where you will release the lock in a minute after you've killed him. Equip the shotgun, spin it around. Try to aim straight down this corridor like I am. And uh, you should be hitting him. Just keep unloading. Unload, unload, unload. And it's uh, a big GG's in the chat from that guy. And then once you're done, we're going to release the electronic lock that's on this panel we're right next to. De-equip the shotgun. We need to go and grab the... Um, De-equip that shotgun, yeah. We need to go and grab the key that is next to Wesker's body on the floor here. Right there. And that'll allow us to escape. All we need to do now is leave, use the signal rockets, and we're good to go. We're golden. We're done. So pretty much you've got, I think, two zombies to run past who should be easy enough to dodge for you. And that's that's it. We're done. So let's go back this way, back down the elevator. What's really stupid is if you save Rebecca, when you get to this point, she shows up and... She doesn't help you in that fight. She just stands outside the door waiting for you. It's kind of dumb. But also what's very annoying with the good ending, if you save both characters for the good ending, when you go to fight the final boss, either one of them can die whilst you're fighting the final boss, stopping you from getting that good ending. So I almost went the wrong way here, but we want to go back the way we came, which is this way. And we're going back to where we originally entered the lab. So, this way, swinging it left, through that tight corridor again, and back through the gated doors. Up the stairs, and at the top of the stairs we want to pull a U-turn, try and squeeze past these zombies. Sometimes they can be in tough positioning, but hopefully you got past them without too much effort, they're quite easy for me. Unsure if I just got lucky with the placement. Hopefully uh, you've got some defense items. You can use your defense items because you don't need them after this point at all. You don't need anything. 
It's, if you've got to here, you've more or less done it now. You just need to leave. And now we can use the lab key on these double doors just at the top of that ladder. And, uh... Follow this corridor. And you should have a cutscene right there. So now we want to follow this pathway along. And grab the fuse that's on the floor right there. A fuse unit. <clears throat> like G unit, but with fuses. So let's put the fuse unit in the wall where it belongs. And that will start up this elevator. Skip this cutscene if you don't want to watch it. And... We're on the way up. Right. You're almost out of here, Master Chief. Don't worry about it. We got you, man. So when you get up here, you'll find the signal rockets. Pick them up. Use them. And that's it. GG, we are out of here. Very good. So, hopefully that got you a couple of achievements and you found it useful. I think the final time was 2 yes, hours 12. No, 2 hours 19. I definitely got turned around a little bit. But still, we did pretty well there. I think I got the achievement for Real Survivor and Racing and Pacing right there for the under three hours, and I just unlocked a visible enemy mode, which I should be uploading a video for as well, if you want to go through that. New closet uh, outfits and stuff. Good times. So yeah, let me know in that comment section if it's helped you. Um, let me know what your final time was, or what achievements this helped you with. I, I'm not sure. Hopefully the real survivor one at least. But yeah, thanks again for watching, everybody. Have a great day. And uh, also, there should be more Resident Evil content linked around on the screen, if you're interested in that. And until next time, take it easy.